Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ricky with Tech Buds Garage and in this video I'm going to be talking about the very basics when it comes down to investing in cars. Uh, so if you've ever wanted to make extra money on the side but didn't really know how to get started, I think based off of my experience out of all the markets that I partake in when it comes down to trading in the stock market, investing in real estate, and investing in the car market, I would have to say that the one that has, in my experience, the smallest learning curve, which means the amount of time that it takes to be successful within that specific market has to be investing in cars. I think it could be, uh, you know, made very simple when it comes down to like, you know, it takes a very long time and a lot of hard work, right, with a normal job to maybe save your first one thousand dollars. But after you save those one thousand dollars, and when it comes down to investing in the car market, I think it could be made very simple. There's there's many stories, and Weston has an amazing story where his brother took eight hundred dollars, uh, and it took him about three to six months to save those eight hundred dollars, but with Within six days, he was able to buy a Ford Ranger, which is a small truck, for $800 and actually resell it for a profit, um, altogether doubling his money. I think he sold it for $1,600. So when it comes down to the very basics of getting started, how is it that you can make money in this car market? So a lot of you guys might think in the traditional aspect, cars tend to be viewed as a depreciating asset. I 100% understand that where you're no buying a brand new car off a dealership or from a dealership, normally it's the dealership that benefits from that overall sell. And you know, I think the easiest way for me to put it is if a dealership can do this in a big scale, be able to you know buy and resell cars for a profit and make a whole business out of it, why can an individual not replicate the same system but in a much smaller scale. Every state has different limits on how many cars you can buy and resell within a year. Uh, in Arizona, to put it into perspective, I believe that you can buy six and sell five within a 12 month period. I think that's very important to know because you should be empowered that, okay, well I have five opportunities within a 12 month period to either make the most money um, or you know buy cars that I really enjoy. And that's exactly what I do now. When it comes down to my McLaren 720S, I just bought a Lamborghini Huracan, my Porsche GT3 RS, um, and my favorite, you know, the GTR, right? The, the one that really started it all. But this um, could also begin, and it normally does, in a very small scale. Um, and to put it into perspective, how is it you determine, you know, when something is a good deal, how you can sell it for a profit, how to negotiate. And I, I want to cover three little very simple steps that I think can go a very long way if you've ever wanted to get started in this car market. So before I get started, I just want to make sure that I welcome you. If you've ever wanted to, you know, be a part of a community that has to do with investing in cars, it's absolutely for free. And that's going to be that first link in the description. It's our Flipping Wheels Facebook group. It's absolutely for free. And, and we would simply just love to connect and allow you to connect also with like-minded individuals for all the other people also investing in the car market um, in the overall United States. So let's go ahead and get started. So the easiest way for me to put it is, yes, in the traditional aspect, a car normally does depreciate as soon as you drive it off the lot. But after it takes that initial depreciating hit, I think it's very easy to say that the rate that it continues to depreciate really begins to slow down. So let me put this into perspective. So when it comes down to maybe a 2005 Honda Civic, it sold from anywhere from around 18 to $25,000. In 2005, you buy it brand new, you drive it off the lot, that initial buyer takes that the, the biggest hit normally, right? Takes the biggest depreciation and that's fine. They bought a brand new but car, they, they take better. the biggest hit. And as it continues to get older and older and older, the car will slowly begin to flatline and depreciate at a much slower rate. So now to put it into perspective, it's 2019 and what is that 2005 Honda Civic worth? You know, if you guys search a 2005 Honda Civic in your area, the average mileage, the average condition, and a clean title, right? That Honda can sell anywhere from around three to $5,000, depending on your specific area and what the demand is. The easiest way that I can put this into perspective of how to determine what a car is worth is, let's do a little test. A 2005 Honda Civic. Go on OfferUp, go on Facebook Marketplace, go on Craigslist. It doesn't mean that you have to make any offers. I just want you to analyze the market. And what that means is you start writing down the car, the year, the condition, and the price that it's selling for. So all the Honda Civics in your area within a 10 to 20 mile radius that you find, write down the prices and, and determine the overall low prices and the overall high prices. And the reason that that's so important is once you identify what the lowest priced Honda Civic in your area that is again of normal condition, clean title, and is you know able to drive, right? Then you can determine what that car is worth 
in your area, what people are willing to pay for it. That's where the demand is at. So when I look at this, my goal as a car investor is to get as close to that specific price point to sell. So let's put this into perspective. Let's say 2005 Honda Civic in my area sells for about $3,000. My goal is not to buy it for $3,000. My goal is to sell it for around $3,000 because I wanna make sure that as a car investor, I give someone a good deal as well. So that means that I have to do my part as a car investor to negotiate, to make offers, and to find someone that maybe is willing to sell it to me for $2,000, $2,500. And some of you guys might be asking, why would they want to sell it to you for $2,500, $2,000 when other people are selling it for $3,000? It comes down to, you know, just demand and the overall position that they're in. If someone really doesn't care about the extra $1,000 or extra $500, then guess what? They'll simply let it go. For some people, you know, they'll post certain things on Craigslist for free. All you have to do is pick it up. Other people will pick that stuff up and sell it. It comes down to you know how bad someone wants it and how bad someone wants to get rid of something. So, so your yeah. goal as a car investor is to first determine what that car is worth, shoot as many offers to build yourself a nice little margin of profit or cushion, right? Because at the end of the day, not everyone's goal is to, to buy and sell something for a profit. Let's say that you're in the market to buy your first car. You're 16, you're 18, you're 25, it doesn't matter, right? You saved enough money, now you wanna make sure that you don't lose your butt, right, when it comes down to buying your first car. So why not just do it in an effective way? It doesn't mean that you have to do anything special, it just means that you have to be aware of what that car is worth, right, and how to negotiate. Once you figure that out, you build yourself a nice little margin, you can enjoy that car for a year, for two years, and really minimize the amount of money that you lose or actually either break even or make a profit on that specific car. People do it all the time, feel free to do your own research and just ask anyone. Can you actually make a profit buying and selling a car? Why wouldn't you? If dealerships can do it, you can do it too. It just means that you have to be a little bit more selective with the cars you choose to purchase. So now that you understand how to determine the price, now that you understand the importance of negotiation and how to bring down that price to build yourself that cushion and the margin of profit, the last thing is, is how to make an attractive listing and the different platforms to post them on. I like using OfferUp, I like using Letgo, I like using Facebook Marketplace. Those are much more kind of like newer platforms that a lot of millennials are now using, but the good Little, you know, Craigslist is also very effective. And if I'm not mistaken, it definitely has, I think, one of the most well known markets. Uh, but again, some people just don't feel comfortable posting on Craigslist. Um, so again, you'll find a lot of deals on OfferUp and on Facebook Marketplace that you won't necessarily find on Craigslist itself. It really comes down to the exposure that you want. If you're okay with replicating that specific listing, right, of the car that you have for sale on all different platforms, it just means that you now have more eyes on your listing and potentially um, a buyer that is going to, you know, run into it because you have it on, you know, so many different platforms, which I think is kind of like the best of both worlds, right? So uh, now that you guys understand the very basics of investing in cars, um, I think that we can all agree that the most difficult part when it comes down to getting started in any market is simply getting started. So I want to make sure that I make that part easier for you. So again, I asked you if you guys would like to connect, right, and learn a little bit more about the car market. If you guys have extra time this summer, extra time this summer, you want to learn about this new car market, either save money, make money in this car market, join a free Facebook group. And once you get in there, feel free to direct message not only myself, we have Weston, we have Caleb, those are the mentors and the moderators that we have within the Flipping Wheels Facebook group that you're more than welcome to ask any questions. We're here to assist you. So it's literally, you ask the questions and we will be there to assist you. This is what Caleb and Weston do 24 seven. We're actually in the works of actually opening our own car dealership because we've been able to scale so much in the past couple of years. So yeah, again, a very small little hobby such as, you know, buying and selling cars and learning the very basics of investing in the car market has now led to us being able to establish and see value in opening up a dealership in Arizona, which we hope to have in the next series of weeks. So I really do appreciate you guys' time. Once you guys join our free Facebook group, if you guys have specific questions about joining our Flipping Wheels private group, that's gonna be that second link in the description. It's not so you can enroll, but it's so we can jump on a call with you and answer your questions. So if you wanna to talk to myself, if you wanna to talk to Weston, or if you wanna to talk to Caleb, all you have to do is click that second link below, and we would love to answer any questions to see if our Flipping Wheels private team would be something of value for you. I really hope that we earned your thumbs up in this video. I do want to encourage you that if you think that this video can be of value to maybe a friend or family member, that you simply share it with them so they can also have a better understanding of how to get started 
happening in this car market and how to find the best car deals in your area. Really do appreciate you guys' time. Continue working hard, continue following dreams. Let your passion be what drives your success. And like always, let's make sure that we're in the year on the green now. Take it easy, team.